Hello, this is Dr. Greg Goblin, Ferris State University. The purpose of this video is to go through NCASE and demonstrate the bookmarking and reporting features and also give a couple of the little tips along the way regarding evidence processing. So I'm going to go into a case that I've already created and already done some work on, uh, the Turden case. And within this menu, um, you can choose several different options and I have some tabs already open. So I'm going to go into the evidence tab and within this tab I already have the Turden image assigned and with the Turden image uh, it's a small one that is used in a lot of the end case uh, videos and, and training uh, things. I'm using it for this video because it's a really small image and so things will process quite quickly. Regarding processing, when you go to process an image after you first load it, you bring up the evidence processor and you, you have another number of options to choose. Well, I've already run some things and so you can see they're already disabled so I can't select them. Um, but I could go back through and choose some other things. And for example, search for keywords. I could go in and I created a subfolder called graphics. And within that I have a, a search expression for JPEG files if I, for example, wanted to kick off a search for that. But there are also uh, a number of other modules that you can choose. Uh, the info parser, or the file carver, and the file carver is also a way you can go in to try to carve out deleted files. And you would go down, for example, for pictures. You could slide down to the to the picture area. Uh, and these are the different types of files you could try to go through. There's quite a number of them. But anyway, that's how you would get uh, some of the options. What I like to do if it's a larger image is run some of the things like the file signature analysis and so forth. Run some of the options, let that finish, and then go back through and, and add other things because while it's processing the second image, I can the second pass, I can go back through the first one and look for evidence rather than just sitting there waiting. Um, I'm not going to kick this off because I've already run everything that I want to. Now sometimes you'll run into the situation where you go to run the evidence processor and it finishes really fast and you can't find anything. And there is a, a, a little bit of a glitch sometimes that happens. Um, and it's a known issue and I've got it here on this Word document I'm going to show you. If you run the evidence processor, it runs really fast and then disappears and you don't get anything. Well, what it might be is this particular DLL uh, might not be uh, in the system or it might not be registered correctly. Uh, so what you can do is look in the, the Windows System32 directory for this CDO sys.dll file and if it's not there you've got to uh, go capture it from Microsoft and so forth. But if it is there and you have that problem you probably just have to run this command uh, and it'll register it in the registry and then you rerun your evidence processor and it probably will work. Uh, this is the, the knowledge article if you happen to have uh, the ability to go into uh, the knowledge bases in the forums that support NCASE. Um, but anyway, I hope that helps because it is not an uncommon situation where you go to run something and it's like, where is everything? Uh, it can occur when you um, re-image a computer as well. So, thought I'd throw that out. Okay, getting back to the idea about uh, bookmarking and reports. Sometimes people take screenshots and put screenshots into a Word document and report that as uh, their forensic findings, and that's okay but there's quite a few advantages to using bookmarks including if you have to go back through and modify the report or 
maybe put some things in one report and other things in another, you know, maybe a condensed report and a full-blown report and so forth. So I like to use bookmarks and encourage using bookmarks and the report features of the particular tool you're using, whether it's NCASE or Axiom or whatever it is. Uh, but after I do that processor that we talked about, there's also this case analyzer. And I have run it already, but I'll show you where you go. If you go back to the home screen, here's this case analyzer. And you just click on that, and it'll run pretty fast. Uh, and the results, I'll go to that tab, uh, look something like this, where you can go through, for example, I'm in the the user accounts and I can see these accounts. Now let's get into the bookmark thing. So something that I haven't bookmarked before. Um, file browser history. Let's say I'm interested in oh I don't know this first several files for whatever reason. So I just checked all those. I can go into bookmark selected and I will do that and I'll give it a name and let's just call it uh, file browser history since that's the folder we took it out of and go next now where do I want to have these now these are all the bookmark areas and you're going to see more here than probably when you're starting and the reason is I've added some folders you probably have something that looks like this now if it's file browser history uh, it may or may not fit in one of these and let's say it doesn't so I could go and I can create a new folder and call it file browser history and it will put them underneath bookmarks if I highlight bookmarks if I operate operating highlight operating system it'll put that folder as a subfolder underneath operating system well, let's just put it under bookmarks okay these are the fields to correspond to the columns that you you see behind you uh, I'll just grab a bunch of them and all each of those fields or columns if you will will be in, included in the bookmark so I can finish it um, let's see let's go into this area with the uh, auto runs executable file links uh, and perhaps this is something of interest uh, and since it's auto run, let's pretend these are something that'll happen in the operating system. So let's just grab a few just for the heck of it. Uh, say they're something we're interested in. We hit bookmark, executables. Okay, and, and let's put these underneath the uh, operating system. Okay, and we'll call it the same thing executable. Okay, and now we grab the columns that we want included, and I'll just grab those. Done. Okay, so that's bookmarking within the case analyzer. Now you might also want to be in the evidence area, and maybe there's some things you want to want to bookmark. Keep in mind, you've got this Dixon box, and on this image is 134,041 files. The zero means there's nothing selected. Keep an eye on that when you go to bookmark something because if you for example uh, selected up here and then you saw something and you wanted to bookmark it uh, so let's say go down a little ways for whatever reason this file this 249 I wanted to bookmark if I now try to bookmark it I potentially would bookmark the entire image and fill my bookmarks into something that's really difficult to, to, to um, navigate. So you want to really be careful with that. You can always uncheck it here uh, and then just check that one and you'll see it's got one selected and uh, let's let's grab two of them. You can also do the, the right click bookmark uh, do you want to note it as uh, selected items? So selected items will get me the two that I selected, file 249 and 250. The single item would get me just 249, okay? Uh, so you've got that single versus selected. The selected is everything you've blue checked. So let's just grab those uh, and we'll just call them, uh, 
Again, this is going to be something out of the operating system. And let's just put them right there. Well, uh, they're unknown. Okay, so that's how you can bookmark into there. Another thing a view people might not be familiar with uh, initially, if you go to gallery view, that's all of the uh, JPEGs and such that are visible on, on this image and maybe there's a couple of them that you want to uh, select. Uh, so for whatever reason we'll grab that. And I'm not sure what it is but uh, see how it says there's three files. Well if we bookmark single item just that one um, you know I don't know some sort of a fence and we can put that in our graphics so it's a picture now let's put it in a, its own folder since it's a, a fence and there we go so that's some of the bookmarks we've got a few there's several that I did before I started this video let's go to the bookmark area so you can see right there is the fence uh, and this is the name of the file uh, where it starts the starting sector. The interesting thing is if you uh, actually look at that uh, particular file, you can go to the disk view and it'll, it'll show you the actual sector uh, that you're on that file. Uh, you can change it to gallery view and, and you can see that file. The timeline view possibly uh, tells you views. So 2011 it looks like we're in March 28th, uh, three marks. Looks like it might be three views, possibly. Um, if I wanted to create a report, if I select everything, everything will be in the report. Now, some of these folders don't have anything in them. Other folders do. Uh, what you probably want to do is just select the things that are interesting to put into the uh, report. Note that you have uh, an examiner note area and that's where you can put comments and all you have to do is add a note and we'll just call this uh, so you can see it happen exam note 3. This is our sample and you can see it pops up there. I could select just that one and only that will be part of our report or I could, and, and you can see it's kind of grayed here. That means there's something selected but not everything. But if I select everything, it turns white. So I've got them all. For whatever reason, we'll take them all. Let's grab some of these pictures. So I'll take the cars and the fence. Um, we did some things in the operating system so I'll, I'll do some that I did earlier, which was the uninstalled apps. And we did those unknowns. And I think we have some things in the file browser history. So just those things I'm going to make a report on. So you go to the reports and you can uh, add those folders to a report. And this is what it's going to look like. So you can see these uh, th these folders can be added to the report. You can add a new section and so forth. Uh, do you want a hyperlink? Do you want to renumber, etc.? You can preview it, and it shows you what some of these things would look like then when they're in your report. You can view re you report so you've got an examination report you can edit the report templates so again you can choose the things you may or may not want to uh, to view but let's just go into our re viewer report so we've got a file browser history um, see and this is the thing that can be a little bit tricky sometimes with end case uh, it is above 
everything else, which isn't exactly where we would prefer. We would rather have the examination report be page one. This case number, examiner name, and default description, you fill those in when you create the case. So when you first create a case and end case, there's uh, a few different options. You can take a, a forensic case or whatever, and depending on the one of those that you choose, and I think I'm in end case 8.4 with this, I think there's five different ones, that determines also the folder structure that's in the bookmark area. Okay, so these are the uh, things that we selected. You can see the examiner notes, uh, but we don't have a bunch of empty folders. Uh, we, we've just got things that we selected. Now, when I mentioned the bit about using a bookmark versus using uh, a screenshot, you can see like this picture of a car, it gives you the path of where that car was found, uh, file created, written, etc., as well as the MD5 hash. Those are things that are nice to know that are not in a screenshot report. Um, so when you're done with this report, you can uh, print it. Uh, you can save it as a PDF and so forth. Um, there actually is one other thing I wanted to point out. I forgot to, to show you how to fix that problem with the report where the file history was at the beginning. If you notice the file browser history, we added that folder and it is at the same level as the, the bookmarks. If we would take that and move it into our operating system area and shift it in, then it's going to fall in line correctly because the file browser history folder was not part of the original template. So now if I went to view the report, uh, it, would, it would take care of that. So let me uh, let me rerun things a minute. So I'll take that one. I'll just get a couple of the pictures and the examiner notes. And let's actually just take two of them. Okay, so now we're in, we're in better shape with our report. Okay. So there you go. That's uh, that's end case in the little bit about the bookmarking in the re reporting and also if you have a little challenge with the evidence processing.